as well as it started fires on fences, fence post, in the middle of farmers' fields. And you'd wonder, why would it start that on fire? Well, because it had uh, wire in the form of barbed wire that uh, conducted the electromagnetic energy back to the post and caused the fire. So that's how severe and how strong it was. But that's the wiring we had back in 1857. What would happen today? The wiring in your house, um, the entire electric grid, your car, planes, maybe even your pacemaker uh, will go kaput. And it's not like you can flip the switch and everything's going to be fine. We'll just flip the fuse and we're back in business. When these things go, the transformers are blown out and burned out. And there are a few transformers out there, the mega ones in the United States, for example, that they don't have a backup supply of. They, they, they can take as many as, as long as a year to make under normal conditions. So we could be out of commission for five, ten, or longer years. And here's what will happen. It's not that we're going to die from that electric uh, magnetic pulse. Um, our body is uh, pretty much uh, you know, uh, immune to it, but in, unless it brings radiation with it from a, uh, a coronal mass ejection, and that's another story. Um, but what will happen is it'll take down the grid, which takes down our way of life, puts us back into an 1800 society, and um, you're going to find immediate anarchy. And, it, and you know, there's a saying that we're three days away from anarchy. And what that means is that's how much right. food people have in their pantries. Right. And after three days, your neighbor next door, the housewife with three kids, is going to do what she has to do to help her family survive. And people will become the biggest predators um, you know, on earth, and they will do ugly things. Um, some will take advantage of the circumstance and start rioting immediately, you know, a la Los Angeles, Rodney King, and other incidents. Um, you know, what happened in Haiti recently after the earthquake, within three days, there was uh, gangs going, roaming the streets with machetes. And so it's just human nature that, you know, a certain uh, group of us will, you know, become ugly and uh, uh, take advantage of the situation. But be it all as it may, um, once the event happens, you've got three days to find a safe haven. And what Vivos is under that circumstance is a modern-day fortress or citadel like you'd have in Europe. Yeah. In the old days, we're the castle with the wall. Even though we're underground, our 200 to as many as 2,000 members that will be located in one of our facilities will be able to ride out the storm, the social storm, for up to a year uh, with all the food, fuel, water, uh, clothing, medical supplies, medical facilities, security devices, etc. To the extent that w they will not, they will be able to hold their ground and uh, and and survive. While the rest of civil civilization, frankly, will kill itself off. Uh, that's what the congressional report indicated: that 90% of the population will die off in a true anarchistic situation. In the context of deep underground military bases, can you share just as a frame of reference for listeners the fact that these bases have been built for over 50 years and explain a little bit about them? Uh, all right. Well, you know, the, um, the notion of a, of a bunker or uh, of a shelter for uh, back in the World War II days as uh, being something that's uh, uh, basically a hole in the ground and very ar archaic, um, uh, is, is not true. Today, they're state-of-the-art uh, cities and uh, that are, are vast and, and provide for thousands of people. Um, there was one that was, that was revealed and uh, disclosed by the Washington Post. A reporter did, ran a story on it back in 1990. It was in Virginia at the Greenbrier Hotel. And underneath it, um, there was a secret uh, shelter for uh, members of Congress. And uh, so once it became revealed, um, apparently it was, uh, once it was outed, it was no longer a viable shelter. So that shelter was retired and converted to a museum. And now I guess you can buy a ticket and go through it as a, as a tourist uh, and see what that shelter of its day, which means back in the 60s, um, what it was like and, and would have been like to live in there. 
Um, but it makes you, um, you, you have to connect the dots and realize that if they uh, retired that facility, they've got another facility. And uh, it's going to be bigger and better. Um, and, and that doesn't take a lot of imagination. Um, we have reports from our engineers and architects that are also involved in designing shelters for the government and uh, in the build, build out of those that there is a vast network across the United States um, that has, has been paid by your listeners and me our, you know, with tax dollars. Unfortunately, we will never uh, see one of those shelters. Uh, we'll never enter one. We'll never even know where they are um, because it is on a need-to-know basis. They're that top secret. Uh, the existence of them, the location of them, the details of them, uh, and so on. And so, you know, who are they for? They're for the government and the government elite. And unless your name's on that list, you'll never, you'll never know. Um, and why are they there? It's probably the bigger question. Why have they built uh, shelters? Of, give me an example. We got a report from, uh, I won't tell you the sources, but they were government sources that there was a shelter in the New Mexico area that was uh, a thousand feet down, able to accommodate 2,500 people, it even has vehicles parked inside in, in large garage facilities. And uh, in that particular one, they indicated they had an earth boring machine, one of these things that uh, bores giant tunnels. Yeah, tunnel boring machine. Parked inside the shelter uh, so that if the shelter becomes further buried, the access uh, entrances from uh, some kind of new deposit of earth maybe, uh, which might be from major tectonic plate changes, from an asteroid, who knows. They can bore themselves out and blast their way out. And this is the way it was described to me. Um, and this particular person uh, managed to get his name on the list, um, something to do with the, uh, he was connected with the computer uh, group that ran the systems, and somehow they were able to get their name on the list. So he was giving me some insight, and we've heard a lot of that. Um, I've also heard that the government knows that something is coming and that uh, they've been preparing for years um, with the shelters. As you say, 50? Yeah, over 50 years they've been preparing. Correct. And over the last 10 years, they've been feverishly, intensely preparing. And here's why. Um, whatever they believe is coming and what they're preparing for must be completed the preparations must be completed before the event or before the world, the rest of the world knows it's coming. And the reason is that once uh, the world was to find out, let's say that you, Kim, had absolute proof of something happening in our future, uh, what it was and when it was going to happen. If you were to go public with that and your proof was absolute and undeniable, I don't know that you'd live to see the end of the day because the government would not want that information out. And here's why. The minute that information gets out, the world stops. If we all knew for certain that on a certain date something was going to happen, you would stop going to work, stop paying your bills, stop abiding the law. And what are they going to do, put you in prison when the world's going to end? Um, and you'd have total chaos. The world would melt down. Those that may already know, um, the government meaning that this event will happen, would, uh, would probably have to go to shelter sooner than later, thus their lifestyle has changed. Um, but also, you would no longer have an ability to prepare, because everything would be in chaos. You wouldn't find sources of supply for food, freeze-dried food, and all the systems. So if you thought, geez, we got three years notice, I'm going to go out and build an underground backyard shelter. It's too late. It all has to be done beforehand, just like you have to have that fire extinguisher before the fire starts. You're familiar with the Doomsday Seed Vault in Norway, correct? Yes, I am. When that was produced, I mean, I understand it as a way to protect what's here, but it bothered me. Why was it put in Norway? Why was it done? What is that about? And so that's something obvious that is being prepared for. Right, and that was paid for by governments as well as Bill Gates. He was a major contributor to it. Um, it is completed. It is filled with um, 
basically every seed uh, on earth. Um, it's uh, deep in a mountain. 